Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. A uh, bit of a different one today, actually. So, past videos, obviously, I go through a lot of rumours of, you know, players that we're linked with, my sort of thoughts and opinions on that. This one's a different one. This is a comparison, and it's comparison between three centre-halves. All I say is, guys, do look, drop a like, do drop a comment. Let me know of the three players that I go through who you're most interested in, but also drop a subscribe. Going to be doing a lot of videos, and sometimes it'll be more than one a day because there is a lot to get through, okay? So let's jump straight in. I'm going to let you know the three centre-halves first. The first one is Hincapi from Leverkusen. It's going to be Longley from Barcelona and Indica from Frankfurt, okay? The reason why I picked these three instead of going for, you know, your usual Bastonis, Bremers, Pau Torres, I wanted to go through three that maybe aren't our first or second options, Okay. I also wanted to go through them because they're probably not as well known. If I'm honest, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people didn't know Hincapi or Indica. That's absolutely fine. The Bundesliga isn't as popular as the Liga, hence why people may know Longley a little bit more. I will be going through quite a few different things on each one of these players. I'll go through passes, I'll go through aerial duels, I'll go through interceptions, blocks, different you know, sort of defensive stats. And I think you'll be quite surprised about how fascinating some of their stats are because like I said two of them play in the same league obviously the Bundesliga and one plays in the La Liga okay so I'm gonna start actually with Longley because of the fact that he's in his own separate league compared to the other two and I think Longley last season didn't actually play a ton of football okay he played in 21 games, he had seven starts and 14 off the bench. So I'm not going to really use last season as such because I don't think it's a fair comparison compared to Hincapi and Dicker. I'm actually going to use the 2020-21 season stats because there's a lot of information about Longley on that season, okay? So obviously don't forget, we were linked with Longley last summer, okay? Now he didn't actually want to come at the time. Because when you look at some of these stats, where he's played 33 games and started 29 of them for Barca, he was getting a lot of minutes at Barca. And I don't blame him for not wanting to come. He might have been really happy there. Now this summer, is, I think it's a different situation. We compare the fact that he, in 21 games, only started seven. Instead of 33 games, started 29. So he only featured in 21 games, but he actually started 29 the season before. So... Going on with the 2020-21 season. Now, everyone thinks Barca, I think of passing, they think a bit of finesse, they think of tiki-taka, right? I would say Longley is a little bit more passive compared to maybe an Indica or an Hincapi. But I'm going to go through some of these, and I think it'd be fascinating. Now, so Barca always normally have a ton of possession, right? Everyone always thinks back to the times where they'd sit on the halfway line, the defensive line, and they'd play in your half and you couldn't get out and they'd suffer, suffocate you and suffocate you and suffocate you until they broke you, okay? Obviously, it's a bit of a different Barcelona now. They have fallen on some harder times. But I'm going to go through 2021, uh, 2020 and 2021. So like I said, 33 games, 29 starts. That's a lot of information here, okay? I'm going to go through his passing stats first, okay? So in, in that time of the 29 starts and 33 games played, he attempted 2,293 passes. He completed 2,129 of them, okay? That's a 92.8% completion rate. Let's call it 93%, okay? It's broken down into me short, medium, and long, okay? One of them's going to really surprise you, actually, okay? So his short passes, he attempted 849 and completed 819, okay? That's a 96.5% completion rate. That's... That's phenomenal, okay? That, you know, if he's passing out to fullbacks, into midfielders, spraying it through gaps in the, in the short spaces, he's getting it where it needs to be, okay? Now, maybe it's not the most the sexy football doing a 10-yard pass to the fullback, but if you're trying to move the ball from side to side really quickly, you want to do it with some accuracy and some precision, Longley does have that, okay? Over the medium attempts... Okay, he, he attempted 1,086 medium length passes, okay? He completed 1,039 of them. That's a 95.7% completion rate. So again, very, very efficient, no matter short or medium passes. If it's going only a few yards to the fullback and centre mids, or it's going 20 plus potentially into the mediums, okay? This one I was actually quite, uh, well, actually, I'd say impressed about a little bit, if I'm honest. 
So if we're looking at long passes, these are the passes maybe he's switching the play to the fullbacks. You know, he's he's getting it into the channels for, you know, uh, the strikers to run onto. He attempted 328 of them, okay? So that's nearly 10 a game in terms of all his games that he started in La Liga. He completed 253, which was completion percentage of 77.1%. I think that's really amazing, actually, when you think about the fact that Barca... In La Liga, it's a very high-pressing league, right? But not only that, you'll also find that he's passing into long spaces and sometimes Barca are sat on the halfway line. So these balls are going sometimes into quite tight spaces. So I think that's brilliant, okay? You can see it when I compare it to the other two, okay, about how their long passes look or how, you know, their completion percentages look. Because actually, if I show you long leg to compare to them now... OK, now Hincapi start played in 27 games last season, started 20. OK, and Dicker played in 32 games. OK, so I'd probably say Longley is, is sitting right in the middle of the two of them. OK, again, I know different styles of football could come into this and maybe the sitting on the halfway line doesn't work for Spurs. Maybe we play a bit more of a deeper line and hit on the counter, but it's going to become games where... We might go against 10 men. We we might sit and we might play a team with a low block as well. You know, do Forrest come out and decide that, oh yeah, we're going to turn a toe, we're going to press high. Maybe they sit back. We might need centre-halves to move the ball quickly side to side because sometimes what I've noticed, especially sometimes with like a, a Ben Davies, sometimes it takes a few too many touches on the ball when sometimes you, all you want to do is ping it out to the fullbacks quickly, you know, or ping it into the midfielders quickly. It's a lot of, oh, I'm going to turn this way. Oh, let me turn back that way and pass it there. Instead of, let me just pass it there, okay? So long lay, definitely, in my opinion, you'll see with the ball, in my opinion, is better than the both of them, okay? So if I go short passes uh, to Indica, okay? So Indica is attempted 621 passes of short distance and completed 568, which was a 91.5% completion percentage. So if we're talking 621 attempts to 849, that is quite a distance between the two. Okay, again, I know Barca might have sometimes a little bit more possession. Completing um, 568 out of the 621 for, for Endica, but out of the 849, 819 are completed by um, Longley. The, 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 the percentage of completion for Longley is 96.5. For Indica, it's 91.5. So a 5%, that's quite a decent drop-off, if, if I'm honest. You know, it's it's a difference between maybe making a mistake or it's a difference between when you you, you might kill the momentum, you might not get it ball faster, uh, forward fast enough. So, yeah, interesting, in my opinion, in that front. OK, but for, for Hincapi, sorry, so uh, Hincapi in that time attempted 428 and completed 391 passes of a 91.4%. So Hincapi and Indica percentage completed for short passes near on identical. Obviously, there is a bit of a drop off of 140 pretty much on both sides for Hincapi and Indica compared to obviously when we're talking 819 completed, we're talking long lay isn't far off double the completions of a Hincapi. Now, Hincapi did start some uh, less games and played in less games. Maybe if he played in the same amount of games as in Dicker, it might have been the same, okay? If we go to medium passes, so like I said, medium passes for long lay, 1,086 attempted, 1,039 completed of 95.7%. For Indica, he, can, he attempted 895 and completed 805 of 89.9%. So let's call it 90%, okay? So already we're talking about over 200 passes less for Indica compared to Longley. And they sort of played in the same amount of games, okay? So that that was quite... I did think that, that was quite impressive for Longley. Definitely shows on the ball, I'd say he's more competent than an Indica. For Hincapi, he attempted 530 and completed 475, okay? That's an 89.6% completion. Again, if we're talking 95.7, close to 96% for Longley, to drop another, we're looking at nearly 6%, you know, 
to to Indica, well, we're talking just over six percent to Hincapie. That's massive, in my opinion, in terms of they'll give the ball away a little bit more. Maybe they're less competent on the ball. Not to say they're defensively or they they they're, they're better dueling or anything. You'll see, but. With the ball, it does look like there's a massive gap to long lay, in my opinion, okay? Now, long passes, like I said, with long lay, attempted 328, completed 253, 77.1%. To Indica, who attempted 301 and completed 189 for 62.8%. And Hincapie, 187 attempts and 111 completed 59.4%. That's quite a decent drop-off. Okay, so Longley and Indica complete, uh, you know, attempted quite similar numbers. Okay, it's twenty seven between, but quite similar. Longley completed, yeah, you know, we're we're talking nearly seventy passes more. Okay, for on those attempts, that's massive. Okay, especially if Spurs that maybe want to play balls over the top into a Son or you know balls into the space for for Kulu to run onto or into Kane maybe to hold the ball up. It does look like Longley's better at that. Okay. Hincapie's 59.4% was a little bit alarming for me, okay? It does look like spreading the play and playing into the channels maybe isn't one of his strongest suits. Maybe he's better at, you know, a Bentoncourt, a Basuma, or a Hoiberg, a Skip, taking the ball off of him, maybe a, a Perisic, whoever it might be, taking the ball off him and moving the ball for him. Whereas Longley, it looks like you could sort of give him the ball and know that he's going to be able to get the ball to where it needs to be. So that's massive, in my opinion. I think that's a huge drop-off. And like I said... I do think Longley's the better footballing player of the three with the ball. Not to say he's a better defender. I'm just saying with the ball, as a ball playing centre half, I do believe there is a bit of a gap between him and the other two. Okay. Now, to give you the overall completion percentages of the three of them. Okay. So Longley's was 92.8%. Uh, at uh, and Dicker had 85.2% and 82.8% for Hincapie. So like I said, big drop-offs. You know, If we're talking 10% between Hincapie and Longley, that is something. Obviously, I know Hincapie is a lot younger than Longley and there's obviously there's a lot more ability to grow and improve. But so I know obviously there is more of a, an ambition to not buy for, for, for the future and, and, and that sell-on factor it does look like we're buying now to compete now. I know Dean Saunders was saying, you know, a few more players and we can contend with Man City and Liverpool. I would say hold your horses a little bit there, Dean, if I'm honest. You know, Man, Man City are an amazing team and they went and bought one of the best strikers in the world. Liverpool went and bought Darwin Nunez, who's probably going to be the next big thing. They still have other great options. We... Yeah, we have obviously really good attacking options, but we are still a little bit off in terms of the overall squad depth as well, okay? So that's on passing. So I'm actually going to come to some more defensive stats, okay? So if I start really actually with the interception side of things, okay? So I'll start with Longley and I worked my way through Indica and Incapi. We'll continue the same method. So Longley in that same season of 33 games and 29 starts, he intercepted 35 times, okay? Think of it as like one a game. In, uh, sorry, in Hincapie's uh, sort of 20 games, uh, obviously 27 games, 20 starts, he actually had 56 interceptions, okay? So that's massive when you think of he's played a lot less football than Longley did that season. He had 21 extra interceptions, okay? Um, in Dicker, though, had the most at 64, okay? So he averaged base, he averaged two a game, okay? Hincapi averaged pretty much two a game as well, okay? So that's, that's quite interesting with the two Bundesliga guys both being around the two interceptions a game, whereas Longley's at the one, okay? Again, that might be a case of different styles of football and things like that, okay? But if we just go off numbers and we don't try and deep dive into too much of, you know, oh, this hey, this much possession in this part of the field, and they pressed here and here and here. It does look like they are quite more aggressive compared to hit, like Longley. Like I said, Longley does remind me a bit more passive than he does aggressive when, when it comes to winning the ball back, whereas these two definitely feel like they actually are quite aggressive, okay? If I come to blocks, okay, so... Longley had 39 blocks in those 33 games, okay? 
on 13 shots and 26 passes. Uh, Hincapie, in his 27 games played, 20 starts, had uh, 44 blocks. Okay, so again, five more blocks. Um, you know, you're looking at, you know, nine less starts and uh, six less games played. Okay, for Indica, when it comes to blocks, he had 74, 22 on shots and 52 on passes. Okay, um, I thought that was really fascinating. If I'm honest, it does really show, like I said, long lays a lot more passive, whereas, you know, your Hincapies and Indicas are a lot more aggressive. Um, again, when you think of Romero and you think of Dyer, you have a bit of both. You have the passive Dyer, who obviously like, he does have his aggressive tendencies, but he's more passive. He's more level headed and control, won't, won't force himself out because he knows he's got Romero there. He's a bit of the pit bull that will go and do that for him. I like the idea of a long lay against maybe a lesser team not in a harsh way that you know Forrest are rubbish or you know last season in Norwich or those guys were rubbish not at all you, what you'll find is you probably want a Hincapie or an Indica against a big top team because they're gonna be aggressive they're gonna want to win the ball back they'll fight for every ball whereas a long lay might unlock a team a bit more if you know what I mean you know get that ball into a cane in space where he's He's threaded the needle a little bit, okay? <clears throat> so that's really interesting about the uh, blocks and interceptions, okay? Um, it's, it's, it is a little bit fascinating when it comes to these things, okay? Because, like I said, I think you need to have that mixture of not relying all on three aggressive centre-halves. I think you need a nice balance, okay? In my personal opinion of, if I had to pick one, my one that I would go for is Indica, okay? The reason is, I think he's a bit of both, okay? I do believe he he is better on the ball than a Hincapi, maybe not as good as a long lay, but he's a lot more aggressive and he's willing to put his body on the line a lot more than a long lay and a bit like a Hincapi, okay? He had a brilliant, brilliant tournament when it came to the Europa League. Obviously, they won that tournament. I think everyone thinks of a Kostic or a or an endo, Indica was massive at the back for them, okay? Kevin Trapp obviously was brilliant in goal, but Kevin Trapp would tell you his job was a lot easier because he had an Indica in front of him, okay? In terms of value, it's hard to sort of work out value of these three, okay? Who's who's valued or what, okay? I saw Hincapie's market value being of, I think it was 18 million euros. I think it's worth a little bit more than that, if my in my personal opinion, okay? He is young, okay, which helps him compared to the other two. I think a long lay, in my opinion, like I said in other videos, I would be steering towards a loan deal, a one year or a two year. I don't see the value in buying him personally. I think we're not going to fix every position this summer as much as we think about 150 million. We think of Paratiki and Conte being absolute workaholics. I believe, like I said about Sanchez, if we can't get a good enough replacement for a Sanchez, let's not sell him for the sake of selling him. He has value in this group. You know, I believe... If you get an Indica and you have an Indica, Dia, Romero centre back partnership, say we don't get a Torres or a Bastoni or anyone like that, I believe that's a massive upgrade than where we were last season when you think then we've got a Perisic on left wing and then the right wing, we'll have to wait and see on that, okay? Uh, obviously, we're talking about full backs, left wing back and right wing back, okay? Basuna being in midfield, you know, or a Hoiberg or a Benson Core, maybe all three, you know, maybe all three. But I do believe in it. each one of these is an upgrade on Ben Davies. In my personal opinion, I like Ben Davies. I really do. But I think Ben Davies has a ceiling. I believe when you think of these three, yes, there are ceilings there. I think Hincapi ceiling could be a little bit higher, which is why I would love to see if we can get one of, you know, at least one of these and maybe a Gleison Bremer or one of these and a Pau Torres. OK, I would love a more finished article in a Pau Torres, because I think if you had a Pau Torres, you had a um, Dyer and a Romero. When you think of a Perisic, and let's say a Jed Spence. If you're telling me we can't close the gap a little bit towards the top two or, or a Chelsea, i would be looking at you like you're, you're, you're speaking a foreign language to me. That is a massive improvement. And I think if we can get at least one of these three, I would be happy with that. 
I think if I had to start one, it'd be Indica. But if, if we couldn't get Indica or Incapi, but we can get a Pal Torre, then I'd love to get a long lay in there as well. OK, but that's the sort of the, the gist of the video. I just wanted to have a sort of a bit of a deep dive into a few stats. Let me know what you think, guys. Let me know if there's any of these three that sticks out to you. But let me know if none of them stick out to you. Maybe if you go, no, let's go whack 80 million down on the table, see if they really want to keep Bastoni. Let me know that as well. OK, do like, do subscribe. Let me know. But anyway, guys, hope you're well and take care.